We are going to be talking about how to manage anxiety during all phases of being in private practice. So I was, you know, as I was thinking about starting this discussion today, I'm like, you know, for some people, there's so much anxiety at the front end. Like, should I start? Should I leave my job? Should I, you know, have reserves? Sh should I, you know, see people in person virtually? It's like so many should, 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 should. And that can be very anxiety producing, right? It, you can, it can feel overwhelming. It can lead people to like analysis paralysis. They are overthinking, 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 or not wanting to move forward. And so in the beginning, it's really important to feel the fear and do it anyways, right? It's so important to put that anxiety aside and really have a plan for those anxieties. Having a plan about what kind of finances you need, what kind of clients you're going to work with. Do you have a website? You know, or do you have a marketing plan? Do you, you know, have an analysis of whether being virtual or in person works better for your clientele, for the business model that you're building, for you as a clinician, for your clients, right? So I think in the beginning, you don't have to over plan, but I think there needs to be some kind of plan. There needs to be some kind of discussion. There needs to be some kind of, you know, information on paper somewhere that says, this is my plan and I'm going to go for it. Because I think it's really normal to feel very anxious in the beginning. And it's normal for people to be like, well, I'm just going to quit my job or you know, I'm going to quit my job and just go into private practice. And if you don't have a plan, you're going to feel anxious because you don't have a plan. You don't know what you're doing. And so whether you work with a private practice consultant, you read Facebook forums, you know, or you do something to learn how to build a practice, I think it's important in the beginning to be in that information gathering and planning. Even as a group practice owner with a well-established group practice, that anxiety still comes up. So it doesn't go away, it just transforms in the way that it looks. Instead of saying, should I, should I, should I? Now it's what if, what if, what if? What if the insurance company stopped paying for interns? What if um, all my clinicians leave? What if you know we get a bad Google review? What if? So. For me, later on in the journey, it's not what if, it, it's, it, it's what if, not should. It's not like, should I hire a new person? I'm like, yeah, let's hire new people. Let's do this. Let's do that. It's now like, what if we can't hire any more new people? What if the new people quit? What if the new people, you know, aren't a good fit? What if this? What if that? What if, what if, what if? And so it's the same uh, process of quieting down that anxiety. It just looks different when you're a little farther along. Some things you just can't plan for. I can't plan necessarily if people aren't a good fit or if people leave. I mean, I can, I can kind of have an idea of what I'm gonna do, but for the what ifs, it's like, I have to start to think, okay, what if that happened? What if all my clinicians decided to leave at once? What would I do, right? I would ask that question, like, what would I do? What if we hired somebody who wasn't a good fit? What would I do? And, and what would my team do? So it's not just me. Like, what would the team do? What could we do? What would it look like? Okay, let's, let's shore this out. And then we kind of go down that path. And then it's like, okay, what if they stopped paying, you know, the insurance company stopped paying for interns or our largest payer reduced rates. What would, what, what would we do? What could we do? And what would it look like if we chose some of those options? And then I just use like regular old CBT of like some thought stopping, like, nope, we're not going there. That's not happening when something is facing me and then I will deal with it. But for now, things are going good. We're going to let them be good. And so we can use our own tactics that we use and we teach our clients to use on how to quiet some of those thoughts. So I talked to you about the sort of like starting the solo practice and then an established group practice. I want to talk to you about the anxiety that comes around in the middle. But first, I want to thank our sponsor, Therapy Notes. If you're looking for an electronic health record that's really full service, one that's not going to raise your rates on you, one that is going to be there for you to answer your calls and answer your questions and provide you with excellent customer service. They have a free telehealth option. You can do your billing through there. You can process credit cards. You can send paperwork through the portal. So it is really a full service electronic health records. I want you to check out Therapy Notes. If you're in the middle, one of the questions I think that uh, come up a lot and that can produce some anxiety is what do I do now? What do I do next? So it's like in the beginning, it's like, what should I do? And uh, towards the more established 
It's like, what if all these bad things happen? In the middle, it's more like, where do I go next and what do I do? Do I raise my rates? Do I stop taking certain insurances? Do I bring on a contractor? So then like the world becomes your oyster and you're able to do a lot of things. And I think that can be a little bit overwhelming to people too, because they're not sure like the risk of bringing on a contractor or an employee or the risk of raising their rates and their clients getting mad or... So there becomes this level of risk that you have to be comfortable with if you want to bloom, right? And so if you want to bloom and you want to get bigger and you want to maybe make more revenue, want to increase your goals, whatever it looks like, then you're going to have to start taking risks and you're going to have to work through that discomfort. You're going to have to work through that anxiety. If you aren't already working with a private practice consultant, you may want to start working with one. If your anxiety feels very debilitating, which even as therapists, it can't can, you may want to work with a therapist. So there's a lot of things that we can do for our own personal growth to overcome that anxiety, but you're probably going to have at least some questions if you don't have a, you know, full blown anxiety attacks over your, your private practice, but you're probably going to have some questions, some doubts, some nervousness, some, you know, fears. And I think that's all part of the process and it's how we handle that, them that make the difference. I'm here most days answering your questions, everybody. I'll see you soon. Bye.